Welcome to part three of an intro to JRebel. In this part, we're going to actually look at how we can use JRebel in our development environment. Previously, we have configured JRebel in our IDE and we have deployed our enabled application Pet Clinic onto our server. So let's have a look at what Pet Clinic has to it. In its, in its uh, source folders, we have a whole bunch of Java uh, POJOs. We also have some um, Hibernate and JDBC and JPA uh, classes as well with some validation code and a whole bunch of web controllers and forms and the usual web project style resources. First of all, I'm going to show you a Java resource change. We're going to change this welcome message on our pet clinic. So I'm going to, I'm going to open the messages.properties file where our welcome key value pair is looked up. And we can see there that that welcome text is exactly the same. This is the value we need to change. So I'm changing the text now to welcome to the pet clinic. I'm going to save that file. We'll notice that as soon as I save that file, nothing has actually changed in the console. The runtime hasn't uploaded the new version yet. But as soon as we refresh our page, we'll notice that JRebel jumps into action. And in our console, we can see it's reloaded the messages.properties file and updated the text on our welcome message. So that was a Java resource change. Let's update some Java code this time. Here's a new form that I've just created. And if I click on Add Owner, we get a whole bunch of validation, uh, which appears when our input box is empty. Let's open the Owner Validator uh, class, which makes this validation possible on each of these. I'm going to update so that the first name validation has been disabled. We're going to comment that out. We're also going to extract some code to a new method. This is the typical refactoring which developers would, would normally do on their code and also something that um, Hotswap wouldn't be able to do because we are changing the structure of the class. We're going to change this, we're going to add this new method called validate address and city. And if we look below, we'll notice that, our, and that, that, that code has just been moved into a new method. Let's make some changes because this code hasn't changed. We're going to, we're going to update the lookup into our messages.properties. First to add a bogus key that doesn't exist. And we're going to change the default message to address is required. We're also going to change the validation for our city input string. We're going to add a new key though this time, which we're going to need to add in our messages.properties file. So I'm going to say, make sure all my changes are saved. And if we look at the console, we still haven't made any uh, reloads into the runtime since our previous messages.properties reload before. So let's go to our runtime after making sure everything has been saved. Let's resubmit by clicking add owner. We'll notice that straight away we've got an validator class that has been uh, reloaded and we can see on our form that first name is now no longer required but address is required and city is required are our new uh, outputs but did you see our defect that we've actually added we tried to add a new key but we actually didn't this should have, this string here should actually still remain as required as our default and we should really add a messages.properties key which is new key and a value which is city is required. This is an example of a defect which is introduced which could be eliminated instantly. We can see now that our address is required and city is required text remains but this time we've updated our owner validator class as well as our messages.properties. So now let's make a spring change. What we're going to do is this first name input box we're going to default this value to be zero turnaround and we're going to do that via spring beans and spring injection. So here we'll see there's no myjrebel.bean. What I'm going to do is go over to my file system where I know I have an implementation of myjrebel.bean. I'm going to copy this file and drop it into my workspace. This is a new file now that we're adding into our environment. If we take a look at it, we just have a simple field, a getter and a setter, nice and simple. What we're going to now do is add this directly into our environment as a spring bean. So we need to go into our pet clinic servlet XML. Now, if we take a look at this file, this is our spring descriptor. The name pet clinic servlet.xml is actually a name which we recognize from our console. This is a file which Jerable is already monitoring in our runtime. When we make changes here, our Jerable runtime is going to pick them up automatically. If we take a look, 
Our spring bean is called Jerebel Bean, and our implementation is the new class we just added. We're adding some property injection, name value pair of name and zero turnaround. This is the, spr this is the string which we're going to directly add into our name field using this setter. So now we've created our new class, we've created our spring bean. The next thing to do is make use of it. So I'm going into the add owner form class. In here we'll find code which is going to use that spring bean. The first thing I need to do is import the myjrebel bean. Next we're going to use some spring auto wiring to make use of the myjrebel bean. And in the setup form method, we're going to call set first name on our form with the value of name in my bean. As I mentioned, my bean is going to be automatically injected via, via spring annotation. So, as you'll see in our console, nothing has been reloaded, nothing has been used of, of what we've changed so far. So, all we need to do now is make sure we've saved everything and go back out to the place where we create the form from, click Add Owner, and automatically we've got zero turnaround auto-injected. This is a full spring change. If you'll notice, we have a whole bunch of changes in our console right now, namely, our add owner form class, which is the Java change which we've made, and also our pet clinic servlet XML. This is the spring descriptor which Jerable was uh, monitoring. From here, we added a Jerable bean as well as reconfigured a whole raft of spring beans, which results in a development environment which entirely understands all the changes we have made, both to code as well as our frameworks. So in this short video, I've shown you some spring changes from a framework, some straight Java reloading, as well as some Java resource changes. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.